Well, this week we wrap up our series, Twyla Reporting for Duty. In our final installment, Neil Melanson takes us to south of Abbeville, where he gets a lesson in cattle drives the old-fashioned way. It's not quite city slickers, but saddle up, everybody, because this week's bottom line is going to be a rough ride. The bottom line is brought to you by the Cotton Board, strengthening the fiber of our industry, and by First South Farm Credit, financing rural America since 1933. Johnny Boudreau pretty much starts out every day the same way, getting his horses ready to work cattle. Well, we need you to saddle your horse then. Okay, saddling the horse first thing. All right. Many cattlemen these days use ATVs to work cattle, but there's a trade-off. <laughs> While horses may require more care, ATVs put more stress on the cattle. More than that, working cattle with horses is a lifestyle Boudreau relishes. So my job today is to saddle up and ride with this real-life American cowboy, Fortunately, he's already done the work of cutting this horse for me, and in fact, training horses is something he does on the side as another means of income. Now put the tail of it through that buckle. The game plan today? A simple cattle drive. Go fetch the cattle out in the back 40 and bring them to a pen nearby where we can work them individually if need be. It's been a while since I've done this, high school even. Let's go. Lesson number one, getting on the horse is a lot easier than making it go where I want it to go. Now, as you can see, I'm kicking my legs to make the horse go, and go he does, nearly throwing me out of the saddle. I'm not blaming the horse, but I'm kind of blaming the horse. Johnny tells me, though, why I might be right. And see, these horses know who's riding them, yeah. and they're going to test you, and they're going to see if they can make you do what they want. Eventually, we got underway, and Johnny explained that cattle driving was a lot like defensive football. In a zone defense, if two, two defensive backs are right together, they, you know, they're not helping each other. you got to kind of spread out. Got to be honest here, I was less concerned with a 4-3 spread as much as I was just staying on the horse and making it go in just one direction. Walk, walk, just walk. And when he walks, give him some slack. When he doesn't, you pull on it. Neil, go that way, Neil. Okay, walk, Neil. As I said, eventually we got underway, and 20 minutes, 30 cattle, and one face-scarring run-in with a tree later, we're back. I did some trail riding, as I said, in high school, and have only ridden a couple times since, but that's nothing compared to the control necessary to drive cattle, especially when things go awry. Go get him, go get him, go get him. Go ahead him. I was able to follow both the calf and Johnny's advice, but not without difficulty. It was clear, though, that I was working with a master. See, right now, watch this. Okay, I want my horse to go forward. Squeeze. So I'm going to just squeeze my legs a little bit, and she's going to walk off. Now watch when I take my legs off. Gotcha. And I keep my legs off, she's going to back up. It became more apparent as we got the cattle to the pen. Okay, Neil, just stay where you are. I'm going to ease along the fence, and I'm going to open that gate, and we'll put them in there where we can work them a little bit. Staying put, I could do. Working the cattle meant working the bubble, though, a zone around the cattle where they felt safe, where we weren't getting close to them with the horses, something easier said than done. It's like they have a big bubble around them, and when you step in that bubble, you're going to push them out the other side. Suffice it to say, my bubble was more of a deflated balloon, but eventually it worked out to where Johnny was able to get one of the herd away from the others. This allows him to do routine chores such as vaccinations, worming, and ear tagging. As I came to find out, this was just a way to show me what it took to make both cattle and horses do what you needed them to do to make a cattle operation function. But then when you get where you want to go, when you put your leg on him, he's going to want to go forward, so you stop him. There you go. Put your left leg on him. By moving the horse, I was able to do things like pick up the gate from the saddle, saving time getting on and off the horse. Other tricks, such as riding over these small logs at a trot and doing a side pass over a PVC pipe. There you go. There you go. See, these aren't just tricks. They're skills that go all the way back to the cowboy days where getting out of the saddle after a long day and caring for your horse was not a matter of leisure, but even of life and death. As I help Johnny yeah. take care of the horses that take care of his business, little spots like that accumulate after the saddle. I reflected on two things that I really learned. One, there are still cowboys alive, men who work with their hands to craft not only a living for themselves or the food that we put on our table, but the tradition that helped make this country what it is today. Secondly, hey, I'm not so bad at this cowboy stuff. Fair to middling, I'd say. Fair to middling, but he has learned, you know. He, he doesn't know how to tie a bowling though, but I'm gonna go show him right now. So this is the hole on this side.
eh, can't go off without a hitch, I guess. Well, Johnny, I'm tired after that day. <laughs> and, uh, so how do you do it every day? It just gets to be a routine and you just pace yourself and uh, you get through it because you love it. Like any job. Like any job, you know, uh, it, uh, if you can find something you really love, it's not work, it's fun. Right, but it's more, like you said, it's more than just a job, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a living, you know, it's not a great living, but it's a great life. <laughs> yeah. To raise your kids and grandkids, I wouldn't trade it for anything. It is, it is, and I had a good time out here. I'm a little saddle sore, so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that after this long day. Thank you very much for Thank you for coming. For this week in Louisiana agriculture, I'm Neil Malansaw. Johnny Boudreau is head of the Farm Bureau's Equine Advisory Committee. Not surprising for a man who can handle a horse and kneel like that. And Neil appeared to be sweating out there. Did you notice that? He never sweats that much in the studio. Thank goodness.